What's up guys, Daniel Tamago here and welcome back to the vlogu. So in today's video, I'll be sharing with you guys my various income streams back when I was still in college as well as how I was able to pay off my NUS student loans while studying in university. Okay, so right now we're here at OCBC Centre at Trulia Street. Sorry if it's a little overexposed. So as you can see over here, this letter from OCBC. Attention Mr. Daniel Tam, we wish to inform you that there will be interest charged on your tuition fee loans at a rate of 4.75%, which is absolutely insane. It will be charged from 1st October 2021 and the outstanding amount for your loan as at 30th of July is 29.5k. Okay, yeah, so as you guys can probably tell, the interest on debt, the interest on the bank loans and stuff are extremely high. Back when I was still a student, I have been saving up for this moment. Straight after college, when they start charging me interest on my loan, I will just do a lump sum payment and pay off the debt. By the way, for those of you who are new to this channel, I recently graduated from the National University of Singapore with a business major specializing in finance. But I did not end up working in a bank. Right now, I'm here trying to pursue my dream of chasing content creation as my full-time job. So if you guys would like to support me on my journey and if you guys would also like to see more content relating to personal finance, productivity, or just random vlogs of my life in general, please feel free to drop a like and subscribe, share the video with your friends uh, if you find this beneficial. And yep, I'm really excited to start this new journey of navigating working life with you guys. Okay, so back to the video. As I mentioned earlier, I sort of had a rough idea and plan that I wanted to work towards paying off my student loans the moment I graduated. But it wasn't something so strict and meticulous that I went to track every single money that I earned and every single cent that flew out of my bank account. Back when I was in college, it was kind of more like a decision tree kind of scenario. Like at every position of my life, I decide which decision should I make that could bring about the highest NPV, which is net present value. Basically, the path that actually brings you the highest value in the long run. It was just like a very conscious kind of logic flow kind of thing that sort of led me to today. And I'm really thankful that all of these decisions has actually allowed me to pick up jobs, generate enough income, generate enough revenue to help me save enough money to pay off my student loans today. So as of today, your boy is 100% debt-free and I'm making this video hopefully to give you guys a mental framework or visualization of what it looks like to kind of earn enough money, save enough money in order to pay off your student loans. And and yeah, hopefully this inspires some of you to actually work towards building up your savings. And I know even for some of you guys, your parents may be funding your university education, which is completely fine, but it doesn't really hurt to save up some money so you can graduate with a few thousand bucks in the bank. And yeah, let's get straight into it. Okay, so we got the iPad out right now. Let me just draw like a rough illustration of how to save money in college. All right. So if you work a part-time job like I did back in college, you will receive income at the end of every month. If you look at yourself as like a business, this refers to your top line revenue at the end of every month you will have a pay slip that goes into your bank account cash inflow into your bank account at the end of every month you will also have to count how much money flows out of your bank account the first one is actually this thing called expenses so i like to break it down into two categories the first is fixed expenses so these are stuff like subscription like your singtel bills your spotify subscriptions all of these actually cause a fixed outflow of cash at the end of every month so you have to account for that and then followed by your variable expenses so these variable expenses are like your sustenance like your food, transport, entertainment, shopping. It fluctuates from uh, month to month. You can one month decide to eat a lot, one month you decide to eat less. So it fluctuates as well, but these are cash outflow of your bank account. And finally, income minus these two expenses, you are left with your savings. So I like to use the example roughly $2,000 into your bank account every month. My variable expenses usually is around like 800 to 900 bucks. For the fixed expenses, I'll just put $200 in subscriptions for now, just for ease of this illustration. And this will actually leave you with uh, savings of... Oh, my light just died. No. Okay, I'm sorry, my light just died. I'm just gonna bump up the ISO, I'm sorry. So this will actually leave you with savings of $1,000 every month. When you have $1,000 every month in terms of savings, you can either choose to put them into a savings account or you can either choose to invest this money or you can do both which is exactly what I did. The method I used to split these two categories was actually I put 20% into savings and I went 30% into investments. So basically 20% of the income I earn every month will be put into my savings account and 30% of the income every month will be put into my investments. So stocks, bonds, cryptocurrencies, whatever. So for me, I actually worked part-time in college for like three years. The first year during my freshman year, I didn't work because I was so busy trying to adapt to the new college life, adapting to studying, school. I had a lot of hall commitments as well. Slowly after I reduced all my commitments outside of school, I actually had more time to go outside and work. So I spent the bulk of the last three years of university working. I will run you guys through my different income streams in a bit. But basically, let's say if you take $1,000 a month in terms of savings, and then you 
multiply that by 3 years, that is actually 1k times 12 months times 3 years, which will give you about $36,000 in savings. And this hasn't even taken into account the effects of saving in like a high interest savings account or the returns on investments, which sometimes can even lead to 10-20% returns. Sometimes you can even double up your money like I did with Tesla or maybe some of you guys may be playing with cryptocurrency as well. As a finance student, I would say the safest is really do long-term investing, have a 3 to 5 years horizon or maybe even 10 years, put your money into like index funds, do very safe dollar cost averaging. Over here, we have a very similar example that CV has done. So basically, if you earn a $2,000 salary while you are studying in college, you will spend about $1,000 on expenses and the remaining $1,000, you can put $400 into your savings account and the other 600 bucks, you can put it into a wealth account for you to invest into stocks, bonds or whatever. The savings account, if you put it in like a high interest savings account, you can compound your wealth over time. But if you invest it in like a higher yield kind of uh, account, like invest in stocks, invest in bonds, STI index, all that kind of stuff, you can actually compound it much faster and your money will actually grow after 20 plus months. Instead of having 20K, you will actually have 25K instead. So yeah, that's the power of compounding or like investing your money. You can actually make your money work for you. And that is if you buy assets. So yeah, as you can see over here, this is roughly the system that I use to save up this amount of money to pay up my college fees. In fact, the actual money that I earned was actually uh, more than this because the income was more. You can check out this video that I made, how I budget my money as a college student. So I actually made this video about a year ago, back when I was still in college. And I've actually broken down everything nicely into like a budget template that you guys can download over here. And yeah, you can literally just go to file, go to download. You can download the Excel onto your laptop and then you can just change everything based on your respective needs. So over here at the savings portion, back when I was in college, I was using the, you know, the POSB kids account. So that one has like what, 0.05% interest, which is sort of negligible. It doesn't do anything to combat inflation. And oh, somebody came in. Who's this? Anonymous Jackal. And below it, there is actually the high interest savings account, which I didn't have back when I was a student. But I just want to pause for a moment over here and introduce you guys to the sponsor of today's video. Okay, I don't really need to pause the video because it actually ties in very neatly to this section over here. Basically, OCBC is very kindly sponsoring today's video and I have actually just created a high interest savings account, which is the OCBC 360 account. So as the name suggests, this account actually gives you a higher interest, much higher interest than your regular kids account. So I've actually included a link in the video description below that you guys can check out. As you can see over here, the first link is the OCBC 360 account. So if you click find out more, you can see over here, your boy is over here on the OCBC website. Now that I've graduated, I work full time. These are like my income streams, which I will elaborate more in a bit. Stay tuned towards the end of the video. But basically what I do is at the end of every month, I credit $2,000 a month to reap the extra bonus interest on my incremental savings. The higher interest, more than 1% to help you combat inflation. And it's much higher than the 0.05% of the, you know, your traditional checking accounts. How you activate this is basically by just crediting your salary, at least 1.8K. And for me, I like to have six to 12 months of emergency fund balance within this savings account. So if you go back to this sheet over here, you can see this portion over here. At the end of every month, whenever I get my salary, 20% of that, I actually put it into this savings account. And this whole savings account actually makes up the six to 12 months of emergency funds that I need. So basically what this OCBC 360 account is, is actually like a rainy day fund for me. And I'm intending to grow it even bigger now that I'm a working adult, I need to save up for like buying a house in the future, saving up for my future kids and stuff. So yeah, that's just a very brief summary of this 360 account. So if you guys have recently graduated like me and you want to find a way to earn a higher interest on your savings and you know, compound your wealth over time, you can actually look into opening a 360 account like I did. This account is probably going to stick with me for the rest of my life. I have put my referral link in the video description below. I'll be getting a little affiliate commission like of a few dollars if you sign up using my link. So if you guys want to support me, that will be very much appreciated. And once again, shout out to OCBC for actually reaching out to me to do this. So anyways, back to the video, there's a better idea of what a high interest savings account is. And the rest of it goes into wealth, which is investments. You can either put it into a regular savings plan, like a lot of banks, they offer that as well. Or you can put it into an aggressive growth account. I won't go too deep into investments for today's video because that is like one whole separate video by itself. But if you guys are interested to learn like the basics, the fundamentals of finance, you guys can check out this video over here that I covered on one of the most important books on personal finance ever, Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. I actually broke down the entire book and the main takeaway, if anything, is you need to understand the difference between an asset and a liability. And basically, the only way to get rich is if you save your money and invest into assets. When you save that $1,000 every month, 30% of it should go into investments and you can actually hit your financial goals like paying off your 
student loans much faster than if you didn't invest your money. As you can see from this table over here, us Singaporeans are really, really fortunate to be heavily subsidized by the Singaporean government. I did a business major over here. For Singaporean citizens, we actually fall under this category, Tier A. We are more than three times subsidized by the Singaporean government. Yeah, I guess for us Singaporeans, it's something that we shouldn't take for granted. Every year, it's about 9.6K or close to 10K, which means for a four years honors program, it's close to $40,000. And every semester will be just divided by two, it's like 4.8K. So yeah, uh, you can look at it in this perspective and just try to break down the numbers so that it's easier for your brain to digest. During my first year of university, I was really, really daunted by I see thousands of dollars and I, I got pretty scared. But one thing I can say now that I've graduated is you really don't have to put pressure on yourself. Don't worry about this. And paying off your student loans is something that is really, really achievable. Okay, I'm going to change the angle a bit since my light died. So get more natural light in. But anyways, last but not least, just to address the final elephant in the room, what were my income streams when I was still a college student? What were the different kinds of side hustles that I did for myself? So right now, I'm just going to share with you guys a little bit of what I did back in college. So the very first one is definitely you can try to find part-time jobs outside of college when you are still a student. My girlfriend Beatrice, she actually did part-time for a few semesters outside of college. She was able to generate some income for herself working part-time outside of school. If you have spare time on your hands outside of studying, you guys can try to explore part-time jobs as well. The most common one in business school is actually summer internships. A lot of my peers, they will actually try to apply for banks, big firms, marketing agencies. Just try to get as much job experience as you can. Try to explore new things. Try to discover what you're passionate about. So for me, the very first summer after my freshman year ended, I actually did a summer internship at iCube building in NUS at a local startup. So the startup was an app. Basically, it was an online car marketplace where they buy and sell cars using the app. And my role over there was sort of like the marketing manager. My job scope was to do digital marketing, try to promote the app, try to drive sales, creating content for them, and basically just taking care of the entire marketing for the team. So if I remember correctly, my salary was $800 a month. I actually tried negotiating for a pay raise. That didn't work out well. But I think I did quite a good job over there because I remember I sort of like tripled their app downloads after I launched a full campaign that I ran myself. I created an entire marketing campaign for them to drive downloads to the app. I ran Facebook ads for them. I basically learned a lot, a lot of stuff from the boss as well about how to run a business business, how to be an entrepreneur. And I found that, okay, yeah, actually I'm quite good at this and I'm also quite passionate about like digital marketing, content creation in general. The very last one is back in college, I think you have the luxury of time to actually try to start a business. And for me, the bulk of the money that I actually made and saved back when I was in college was after I joined Parallax in 2018, which is a local video production studio that I co-run with my friends. So if you guys had attended the Apple keynote that we did recently, my incredible partners, Ming and Chris, they had actually explained the entire journey of how they founded the business, the struggles that we faced at the early days of trying to start a company. Chris was also a uni student together with me. We graduated at the same time. And fun fact, Ming actually founded the company before he even went into NS. And I always emphasize this concept that when you are younger, especially back in college, you are able to stomach more risk. You are able to try to run a business, try to study from the ground up and try to create something successful for yourself. And honestly, I think being an entrepreneur is actually a very good experience. Even if you try it and you fail at it, it's something that can really open your eyes up to the business world, how to make money, how the entire business ecosystem works. And in fact, many of my peers in business school as well, they have also went on to start a lot of successful businesses. And finally, I did not include this in my list, but another option is definitely you can try to start a YouTube channel. So I didn't include it in the list partially because it's not a very realistic option for a lot of people. And also because it didn't make up a lot of my revenue back when I was in college, I would say it made up less than 5% of my income generated as a college student. YouTube has definitely generated generated more money in the recent few months, which I will break down more in detail in the next video. And yeah, I guess that's about it for the various ways of income that you guys can make. At least those are the income streams that I tried out back when I was in college. So I would say I'm definitely not the best person to ask with regards to how you can make different streams of income back in college. Because for me, as you can already tell, I'm super invested into content creation as my main passion. So any other kind of jobs outside of that, I'm not very familiar with them. I think the ultimate thing is you have to find a job that you are really passionate about and and that you can actually provide value to your customers or to the business. So when you think of like salary, the income,
income that you make is very closely related to how much value you can provide to the business. Back when I was doing my summer internship, the value that I brought was actually in terms of my marketing expertise, the knowledge that I had about digital marketing, copywriting, launch, running campaigns by myself, producing all the content as well. I might have continued extending my summer internship with my boss back then because he actually offered me to extend and work part-time even after my semester started. If I were to leave you guys with one thing, the most important thing in terms of trying to save money or maybe trying to pay off your college debts is you definitely should find ways to try to increase the top line which is increase your income streams but don't get too pressured by that don't keep on worrying about like oh I have to increase my income in college I have to find new ways to earn more money don't worry about that focus more on trying to find stuff that you are passionate about focus more on trying to provide value trying to read new material gain new knowledge to value add to the businesses or like companies that you are going to work for if you make the best decision at every phase of your life everything will just work out fine and even if it doesn't it's not the end of the world it's definitely a good experience for you and you can definitely work on paying off your college debt even after you graduate just remember the framework that i use earn income try to spend less on your expenses try to put more money into your savings where you can invest it or you can either put it into a savings account and don't forget for those who have just recently graduated go and sign up for your ocbc 360 accounts link is in the description below join me at ocbc <laughs> i hope you guys enjoyed it there will be more finance videos to come let me know in the comment section what other finance related stuff you guys will want to see and yeah feel free to drop a like share the video subscribe if you want and i'll see you guys in the next video